Welcome to Ours for Retirement on the Political Trenches Local Government at Work. So why do people leave political office at the height of their career? Why are there more people departing elected office at the municipal level than in previous years? Today, we are honored to have the former mayor of the District of North Saanich, British Columbia, Jeff Orr, on the show. Jeff served as the mayor from 2018 to 2022. He stepped away from the municipal government in November of 2022 by choosing not to run in that fall election. Prior to his term as mayor, he served as a councillor from 2014 to 2018. He began his time as an elected official with extensive experience in community relations, a community com a comprehensive understanding of local government and a willingness to learn, serve, and advocate on behalf of community members. Prior to being elected in 2014, Jeff was the president of the North Saanich Residents Association for eight years and chair of the Saanich Peninsula Water and Wastewater Commission for six years. He also enjoyed many years as the Peninsula Minor Hockey Association coach and executive member. He was also a member of the Capital Regional District Regional Water Supply Commission and served as a member of the Victoria Airport Authority Consultative Committee. So with that extensive resume under the belt, we are honored to welcome Jeff onto the political trenches. Jeff, welcome to the show. Yeah, I'm very pleased and honored to, to be here. So thank you for the invitation. So, Jeff, as the episode is titled R is for Retirement, I, I want to sort of open up with a line of questions with a pretty straightforward question, though. After four years as a councillor and then four years as a mayor, in the summer of 2022, you made the decision to retire from municipal office. Can you give us a reason why, after eight years in office, you made that decision to leave the political arena? Yeah, it's a it's a probably a pretty difficult one to sort of really narrow down. And if you're okay with it, I, I'm just going to read a paragraph from my announcement to the community. And that may sum it up a little bit. So what I wrote back in May of 2022 uh, was that um, I was encouraged to run in 2014 for council. Uh, and I began this journey, which wasn't part of any kind of master plan you know, in my uh, in my life, I was uh, privileged to be elected at that point. And during that time, I worked pretty hard to represent all residents uh, when uh, we had decisions to make at the council uh, table. And I, I thoroughly enjoyed my role uh, as a member of council and certainly as mayor, um, a role that for me, like, like many jobs, this can be simultaneously rewarding and, and very challenging. Um, and I, and this is probably gets to the heart of the matter. I am a gentle soul uh, by nature who believes in practicing empathy and compassion. Uh, and I had have to confess that the cumulative impact of uh, recent conflict around the in the community and less so at the council table, but in the community um, has been hard on an awful lot of people, myself uh, included. So. That gives you just a sense of, um, you know, really became a personal decision. Is, is is this the right thing for me to do? Even though I, I felt that I could still do the job and was electable, uh, it was a time for me to to let someone else step in and and see how um, how they made out in public service uh, serving the community. Thanks. I'm going to jump in, Jeff, if I can, and I just want to back up just a moment, maybe not even back up, but give you a bit of a chance to to toot the horn of North Saanich, because I suspect we, we've got people who watch here coast to coast and some overseas as well, and who may not actually know where about North Saanich. And frequently, the mayors are some of the biggest boosters around. So can you introduce mm -hmm. us to the place you're from? Yeah, no, I'm happy to, Ian. We are, I suppose, every community is unique in a way, and I think that's a true statement. Um, in our particular case, we're, you know, we're located uh, sort of con contiguous with Sydney, which people may be familiar with on the north end of the peninsula. Uh, we have a really, um, I would say, a really sort of diverse mix of who, who, who we are. And so here we are, uh, largely a, an agricultural community, lots of rural agricultural space and historically that's how we evolved but right smack in the middle of that we we have the airport it's in north Saanich, victoria airport 
pretty big industrial hub around the airport. Uh, probably the largest industrial hub in, in, in the South Island in terms of uh, employees, etc. And also we have the Swartz Bay Ferry Terminal in North Sands, which is a major conduit, of course, as you know, to bring people to the island. Um, our residential development is, um, is I would say, uh, you know, modest population of 12,000, roughly 5,000 uh, homes, uh, give or take, make up that, that number. And, 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 uh, and essentially no kind of uh, downtown or, or, or place to uh, go to shop. Sydney is our, is our shopping area. We have a couple of centers in our Saanich which provide cafes and a place to collect, you know, collect and gather and, and meet neighbors. So, so that, that, that's a bit about, um, you know, the physical parts of where we are. And I think based on that, what I've just said, one of the struggles that we have is this, is this, and every community faces it, is this growth uh, with residential versus the preservation of environment and agriculture. And that, that reared its head again, no, no question, in this last term and has historically been really a catalyst for a lot of the dialogue that goes around the table. Yeah. yeah. Well, during your, and I would now would like maybe go back to that first uh, response you had given to about uh, reasons you had chosen to run and then not to run. And, and that is over your time as a community person and then as an elected person and now as a mayor emeritus, I think as you had referred to it, um, how have you seen the role of the local government leader change over the years that you were involved, at least? Hmm. Yeah, the way that's, um, you know, that's also hard. I, 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 I believe certainly being the leader um, is what you bring to the table. Everyone's leadership style will be different. And th those that perceive the role you play will have different assessment of your role as the leader. Uh, it would be fair to say from an externality point of view that, you know, the the variety of issues that we deal with, trying to balance, uh, you know, budgeting, physical infrastructure changes, policy initiatives that deal with future forward thinking. And there's a myriad of those, as both of you know, um, working together with other municipalities. And we, we're a bit perhaps odd here that we have 13 municipalities in a fairly small area. So, so the ability to work together is, is, is hugely important in my opinion. And so those are the, those are the sort of uh, uh, impacts on how we do what we do. When you add to that, the role the public plays in that, which is a public facing institution, municipalities, and you add the ways that they participate, social media, coming to council meetings, et cetera. I think what I saw was, was um, certainly an increased uh, use of those other platforms, myself included. I, I went for probably first term almost without having a smartphone that did email and everything and, and finally you know, made the switch. So, so that has added an awful lot of, uh, positives in terms of interaction but boy it comes with a lot of landmines in terms of um, which I think is what's maybe changed a little is the negativity the the angst that you feel in the community and people's some people's inability to participate in the process in a in a civil and kind respectful way I'm just going to jump in because I have a follow up to that. And I, I was going to ask this a little bit later, but I want to sort of start this line of questioning now. So that way, if it does snowball into something more that I can jump in on it a little bit more. But in 2022 in BC, we saw a massive turnover at the council table and at the at the mayoral chair. Now, mm -hmm. in 2018, when you ran for mayor, I'm assuming you did not think COVID-19 was going to happen and the global pandemic was going to change the name that municipalities had to deal with, but it did. When you talk to your former mayor emeritus from across uh, BC or even people you speak to who were councillors who sort of left and retired, did COVID-19 play a role in sort of the changing of how sort of politicians are dealing with sort of global issues in the way that we are now seeing with the conflict that's going on, or the sorry, the war that's going on in Israel and Hamas. We are seeing uh, things that that traditionally uh, 
municipal politicians never had to talk about sort of they're being asked about from even local newspapers yeah. now yeah um i think again i'll probably go back to what it what it did what covid did was ask each of us in roles of leadership or roles of institutions businesses etc and but coming at it from the municipal side it asked us to step up and deal with what was what was thrown at us and deal with that in a way that um, conveyed a sense of uh, uh, coordination, a sense of understanding, a sense of competence on behalf of the citizens, in this case of, of North Sandwich. So it, um, what you saw there was different people responding to that differently. And when, you know, when you think about elections and what we go through, we don't get asked a lot of questions on the election trail or even that are brought up. Well, well, what are your characteristics as a person in terms of how you manage stress, in terms of how you manage the, you know, real conflict? And yet that's such a huge part of the personal interaction that we deal with. So, so I think that it was a really good learning process for people individually, should they choose to sort of to take on that new responsibility and develop themselves in a different way to be able to deal with it. It, I think what it had, which is a positive, I think what it had on the negative, on the underlying side, that just like any kind of mental illness or mental challenge, that it goes sort of unstated. And I think what you what you saw was a, a buildup of the tension and the stress associated with the prolonged nature of COVID during that time and being having to still operate and do what we needed to do, albeit in a much different way. So some people through that process perhaps felt that that was too much for them and decided not to continue. Others um, pulled through and um, maybe that developed stronger resolve in them to actually take what they learned and, and the confidence they had in their ability to lead in that environment and extend that through to their communities. And I give them full credit for that uh, decision and that ability to do that. There is a lot of uh, micro sort of micro macro issues that municipalities have had to deal with over the last eight years. And you've had to deal with them as a councillor and then four years as mayor. I can imagine leaving the political arena with some of those issues still up in the air that you were so passionate about that you wanted to champion. It's kind of hard to sort of get up and just say, okay, it's for the next people. When you made that ultimate decision, when you were talking about uh, the reason why you departed and why you were not standing for re-election in 2022, was, was it a heavy heart to say those words, to say, okay, someone else's time to sort of pick up the ball and see if they can move the district of North Sandwich forward as well? Uh, absolutely, without without question. Uh, you, you know, any, any kind of decision that you make um, you know, of that magnitude, and I say magnitude in the sense that there's two parts. One is my own, the impact on me making that decision as far as my life and what I choose to do going forward, but as well as the sense of the community, um, those that put faith in you and thought that you were doing a, a you know, a good job and that um, they wanted you to continue. And so, so it was, uh, it was an enormous decision. And I, and uh, Ian and I, I think maybe talked about this previously, but I, I, I worked uh, through with a life coach for about four or five months before making that decision with the intent of making that decision in the spring of 2022. So all of that got thrown into the mix, um, much like a council decision and, um, and like difficult council decisions or any decisions in life, the, the school of thought is that you need to turn to your intuition and what feels good in your gut. And certainly I did that in, in this case. What I didn't anticipate or understand is how I would actually feel once that time came. In other words, that decision was five months prior to. So I felt good about the decision. I didn't go back on the decision. I, I didn't want to change that. I felt I'd laid it out pretty clearly. And I felt good about all of that. When I left in, in, in the fall of last year, 
there were so many things I didn't anticipate that um, really I've only, I would say in the last couple of months kind of come out from under that. And that is leaving behind all of what you know, uh, technically, professionally, etc., leaving behind all the people that you've connected with. And, and I, I strongly believe in the importance of connection with community and other people in terms of how we move forward in whatever role we play with our own community, inner circle, etc. So those things were just sort of gone. And, and so, and again, I don't regret the decision, but there are unintended things that, that happen and then you have to move forward and deal with it. So I gave myself a year and I don't want to jump ahead because some questions might be coming, but um, yeah, it was very, very, very difficult. Yeah, some questions might indeed be coming. Uh, but as you look over your career as an elected official, councillor and then mayor, uh, and you have taken all those meetings and conversations and decisions and kind of synthesized them into, I don't know, the, the Jeff code. Is there are there two <clears throat> or three things that you may you would pass on to people who may aspire to be a mayor or may aspire to be a councillor and to how to do the job well in service of their communities? Mm. Yeah, de de definitely. And um, a little bit like when you when you get asked the question, well, what are the accomplishments? You, you forget a lot of them. And uh, and so if, if I was to say, you know, to pass it on, it would be. And, and then again, this is my perspective on how I feel that the role should be carried out. And um, I think we need to fundamentally be willing to to set aside some maybe strong opinions we have on things, uh, ideas about things, and not forget them, but set them aside in context of how we govern at the municipal level. And that is uh, one of, in our case, one of seven other communities are different numbers. And so what's important there is to, on behalf of the community, is to be able to exist in that decision-making body in a way that honors and respects all opinions at that table. Because in theory, the way the process should work is that the electorate out there elects people on balance that they see that are running that, that might bring their part of view to the table. They may vote for somebody that doesn't quite line up but brings a certain characteristic. So that's one thing is to just really uh, and also set aside in that personalities and work. And I think I did a really, really good job at the dialogue around the council table. I didn't always agree with certain opinions coming my way, but I was always very respectful to everyone around the table. And I think our council worked worked really, really well after having some bumpy ones in North Saanich and there's, it's a bit bumpy uh, currently. Um, the other part of that is... Uh, relationships beyond the table and i say that because on the peninsula here we have three neighboring central saanich sydney and north saanich and certainly before i came to office uh in 2014 and and even when before i came mayor those relationships were not um firing on all cylinders and i think the public wants to see that because if you can't have a relationship on a one-to-one -one level with a, a, a mayor a neighboring mayor etc and how can you expect to do things that we know are common interests? And there's many, many of them. And so it's really important to, in the same way, develop those relationships and go forward and make an effort to, you know, to do that. Um, you know, come into the role and um, be willing to set aside your ego and understand that you won't, you don't understand everything you need to reach out and it's okay to reach out. And so the word vulnerability um, comes to mind and it, it's been a big part of me being elected, uh, that word and what that means. And so that's about being vulnerable. It's, it's, it's being willing to say, you know, I don't quite know that, or, Hey, I made a, I made a mistake there. I think I need to revisit that. So, you know, there are, there are, there are so many different levels of that. I, you might be catching in this. I, I'm not, I'm not a big, big initiative person. I didn't come to the office trying to do A, B, C, and D. I came to the office having served the community in a different way for about 10 years prior and extending that uh, that public service 
and doing that in a way that served the office and served the community uh, as best I can. So it's about having dialogue. It's about respecting other opinions. And it's about having the courage and the conviction at times to make decisions that um, are difficult and that people may like it. Some people may not like it. So right. that's an interesting point. And that would have meant I mean, you require sometimes the understanding that it can be lonely at the top as well. So I'm sure that balance, uh, balance of your public life and your private life or your work life outside of um, politics as well was uh, was something you had to look after. How successful were you at balancing public, private work as you went through decisions? Yeah. Yeah, that <laughs> one's that's one that one's loaded. loaded. Uh, <laughs> you know, I'll I'll go personally and give you one little anecdote. So I, I have evolved over these 60 plus years, um for whatever reason, good, bad or otherwise, to to want people to like decisions that I make and probably by extension to like me uh, through those decisions. Um, that was that, that so in being in office and knowing that that wasn't going to be the case, that, that, that's a, that was a big strain on how come we can't, you know, just get people to sort of see the other side and, and understand that and, and, re, and do that in a respectful way. So that, that really, um, that really that tugged at me through my time uh you know in office but at the same time th this this journey that i was on the last eight years i learned i learned so much from start to finish i learned about what my role really was and and that that changed from start to finish i i i think i don't like the term you know, thick skin, uh, that 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 kind of thing. But I I think what I do like is that we have to um, understand and be able to deal with uh, challenging and conflicting situations in a way that uh, doesn't um, disregard our own feelings associated with that, um, but also doesn't. Um, you know, doesn't inflame the issue, doesn't make the issue that's in front of us worse. So, so what was the, you know, the lasting effect of that? I have said to people, and I alluded to it earlier in this, that um, I don't think I appreciated how much of the conflict and the, the tough decisions and the, some of the venomous stuff that you hear, how much of that I stuffed away and stored away to keep the the public persona uh you know intact and alive and that that is what has been you know flowing out of me in a, in a not in a volcano way but perhaps in a in a let me call it a slow geyser kind of a steam release way and so that was that was unexpected yeah so lots lots I, lots of different places that could go there but that just touches on on some of that yeah thanks I want to talk about the last year. So we're coming up to one year since you left pri uh, public life for private life as a retired politician. Now, for eight years, you had to read a agenda package uh, on a weekly basis. I've got to ask the sort of the stupid question, but I got to ask it because I want to know for my own uh, Sandy. How often have you looked up the District of North Sandwich's uh, agenda for the coming week to sort of get an idea of what's going on in your community? Well, you know, I, I tell you, it's a, yeah, it, to say it's, it was a change is an, is an understatement. Um, yeah, not only look it up, read it, but create it and then make sure it's okay and time it and all these, all these things. So how many times have I, you know, I, I, I've been, I've done a really good job of stepping away from it. And I think that I have looked up the, the agendas maybe three times in the last year. And, and so that's just, a, that was a, really a conscious choice to say that if I was to continue to look it up, then have I really left that role? And there is nothing, the other thing I've realized, there is, there is nothing that's so monumental that um, requires my attention to it to make sure it happens in, a, in the way that it, it, I think is the right way or the correct way. There, it just isn't, doesn't exist. So I'm, I was prepared to step away to let others 
continue. A few others that left council at the same time didn't haven't taken that approach and have been more engaged in it. And um, that's their decision, and that's fine. I, I do I, I do check when there's something that really is what I would consider, you know, qu quite important in terms of how the council is governing themselves. And then, then I decide whether I need to be involved or not. And so far I have not, you know, gone. I don't want to be a watchdog for, because I know when I was in the role, when people are always telling you and being critical of how you're doing things, um, that didn't ever feel very good. And I used to always say, well, you know, you got a chance to participate in this process and run or, or do it in whatever way. And uh, so without that agency now, it would be almost a little hypocritical of me to continue to, if I, if I was really that interested, I would just run again. Hmm. And so I really have stepped away. And, um, and it's funny, and, and, you know, George Cuff and Ian, you, when you do your seminars, he's always said, well, you know, one minute you're elected, next minute you're not. And I heard that many times, and and believe me, that's that's the reality. You you are just there, and um, people aren't knocking your door or phoning you up to see how you're doing or ask you for advice, etc. You are you are now not elected. So, so I want to I want to pick up on that for a second because I'm going to challenge you here a little bit, Jeff, and I apologize if I'm going to come across this way, but. Uh, I've spoken to many numerous former mayors, my aunt, one of them. And when she retired in 2014 in Ontario, she had people coming up to her in the grocery store, still asking about what's going on at council, because mm -hmm. there was an apathy in the community that they didn't know who their local councillor was or who their mayor yeah. was, because they just assume because you were there for eight years, whether it be four mm -hmm. years in council, four years in mayor, you're still the mayor. They don't, they're not paying attention like yeah political observers like we are do you see an apathy in your area where people may still want your opinion even though you just don't feel comfortable with offering your opinion because you don't want to get back into the arena and you're telling them you get involved here's where you can sort of get your links and find your agenda packages and reach out to your local counselors now i, I i've done the mayor part i've done the counselor job i've moved past it is there an apathy and how do you combat that apathy in communities where people just don't really care about municipal politics? Yeah, boy, there's, so there's, there, let me tackle, there's a bunch of things in that. Um, so I, I want to be clear. One of the things I enjoy and I will always engage is if I'm uh, stopped and somebody does know what I did and engages in conversation. And I, I love that. And I, I still see an awful lot of people everywhere and, those that aren't elected that know me, that are with me, acknowledge that quite often. I've had probably a dozen people that not know that I was no longer the mayor and, and, and start really diving into an issue. And, um, and what I do and what I've always done is I listen carefully to what they have to say. And then I uh, will tell them, well, I, you know, I appreciate and I understand that issue. I'm, I'm no longer the mayor, and to which they sort of get a little embarrassed. Uh, but I say, hey, no problem. And I engage in the dialogue. I have no problem engaging in that kind of dialogue because that's community. And, and if I can steer them. So what I always try to do is steer people toward something else or give them a little different perspective. And 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 the, the biggest one, which I think applies to to just about every issue we deal with in our society, is there are always two different points of view on every issue. Some have maybe the difference is, is smaller, others is quite large. There is never one clear uh, definitive answer. So I always try to, just like you have here, just challenge people a little bit to think about what it, they're bringing to the table in a different way. And maybe they'll just let it go there, or maybe they will steer and talk to someone. So is there a general apathy in the community toward uh, issues? I, I would say yes. I mean, we we have turnout of North Sanchez is actually pretty good. I think it was uh, 40% or something. So we think that's good. But as you both know, that means 60% of people don't even vote. And yet you have no idea knowing who voted or who didn't. And when their voice comes to the table, and I don't think that that really, that really matters. They're in the community. And so is there an apathy or not of not knowing? Yes, there is. 
Um, however, if people are asking, it's going to be like, I just, as I thought about, like your kids ask something, uh, I have three children and, and I always have to listen and I don't know where they're coming from. And their question is as valid, uh, no matter what the answer is or whether I feel they should or shouldn't have known that. So how do we change that? I, I really don't know the answer to that. I, I don't know if we ever will fundamentally move that needle. I, I'm not a big believer in requiring people to vote. I, I, you know, I, I think that that doesn't necessarily uh, help. Uh, um, so we get what we get because of the system. And I think what it requires is going back to some things I said earlier, those we do get in there, the people that are running, that are going to, we're going to put our faith in them, whoever votes, etc., are the best people for that job that put their names forward. That's all we can do. And then, uh, and then work toward, you know, a better, uh, a better outcome. If I got a couple of quick things for you, well, maybe either quick, we'll see as we come kind of to a bit of a close. And that is, and it's kind of a, a bit of a play on what you were just saying too. Is there any sort of an informal role that you have taken in the community in terms of advising people who are interested in running or newly elected councillors or the new mayor to a sober second thought or a sounding board as well that informally that you might play? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So part of what I, I set for myself was a year to, uh, you know, establish what this next phase of my life was going to look like. Um, and, and just a bit of a segue, when I looked up retire and, and, and the word, and it comes from an old French word to withdraw. We've, we've changed a little bit. It means you retire and you're off to Tahiti and living, you know, a wonderful life in some warm place or whatever it might be. Uh, so to withdraw, withdraw from. Uh, so I've got a lot of left in me. I think I've got a lot to contribute. I, I I'm productive. I I can still uh, participate. I've got the energy. Um, so so I have not actively sort of put my shingle out, so to speak, to say as one of the things, "Hey, listen, I'm here." I have offered informally through the process to anyone that you know wishes to find out more about anything. Well, I'd open there. Um, the mayor and I just was playing ice hockey this morning and talking to some guys in the room. And, and I said, one of the things that's interesting about, you know, the current council and to, to a specific extent, the mayor is there has been no reach out. And um, hmm. I just find that um, odd and perhaps a little sad because, and that may be, uh, uh, maybe I'm dipping into the ego here that to think that I have some value and maybe that's not the case and I'm totally misreading it, but, but I really do think that there's some value. And so why people choose to or not choose to is really a bit of a mystery. I would, um, you know, as a mentor, I, I love the notion of teaching, passing on knowledge to, to folks that um, are interested. And I would, I would welcome that, that opportunity to do, exactly that however I, i'm not going to hang my worth on whether people come to me for that information if that makes any sense all right well it's a nice little segue then to my final question we talked about kind of where the before the, the now and now we're looking for what's next what is next for for you after your year of rumination yeah it's still uh it's still undefined uh, and i think when i think about you know the notion of retiring withdrawing i think for me, there's there's a few broad categories on the horizon. I'll continue and still do volunteer in things now. Not many, but I'll, I want to put a plug in for the local repair cafe. Uh, Ian and I used talked about it. That that combines my my other skill with fixing things with community connection. Uh, that's the sort of thing on a volunteer basis. So I will I will be very selective in terms of uh, the number of things that I get involved with. I do believe that I'm interested in and also need to, to a certain extent, look to some employee that generates some income. So there's a lot of years ahead and uh, I would prefer to, you know, be able to make it till the end, whenever that, uh, that is. Um, I may do some consulting type work uh, related to what you just talked about or even other things. And um and, the, you know, a, a big part of what I've been doing is um, time 
call it whatever you like, self-care time, personal work time. I have really, um, the, the door, the door has really opened up to a, a different way of living that is, um, is a little more focused on, on let's say who I am at the core uh, without the strappings or the trappings of the external world and who I am at the core and how can Jeff in that mode best uh, best be with others, family, community, etc., cetera, uh, going forward. And that has, I've been, you know, like I say, putting a lot of work into that and that will continue. And, and that's uh, exciting and scary and, and uh, rewarding and emotional and all of the above all at once. So, um, so that's, yeah, that's what the future holds. And it's of course, like many people stay tuned. Good. Thanks. <laughs> I, I have one final question, then I'll, I'll wrap up here, but eight years in public office, one year post public office in private life, is the Jeff we're talking to today the same Jeff that entered public office in 2014? And if not, how has Jeff changed to better serve his community in those pu more public roles that he potentially might be entering into, whether it be through volunteerism or mm. through other uh, avenues? Yeah. Yeah, no, great question. Um, I'll say just just straightforward the Jeff today is not the same Jeff that was uh, entered politics in 2014 and I think there's an awful lot of factors there when I think back to 14 um, having been involved in the community associations as you read out earlier a lot of issues you know tough issues on the periphery not being involved I will say in 2011 I uh, made the decision to uh, quit uh, quit drinking. And so I, I say that because that also has allowed me to evolve as a different person from that point forward. So there was, there was, there was a lot of stress, a lot going on in 14, just age of my children, a lot more going on in life. And, and so entering into that, I, I knew what I knew at that time. The last eight years has provided me with the uh, the opportunity, and I've been a privilege to learn an awful lot more about how local government works, how we do govern ourselves, uh, how I can or how anyone can participate in that process through the period, understanding, as I said earlier in the interview today, uh, what roles we play and why it's important. You come in a little bit charged with, okay, I'm here. I, I know how to do ABC. I'm going to get in there and really show everyone that I can do that. And you realize, well, the system's not set up to, to, to handle that input. So the role playing and, and what roles are required, the, the examples of going through different difficult situations and dialogue have helped me as I've talked about be a better person in terms of handling that so when I think about going forward I think that I'm I'm a I'm a more well-rounded person in terms of my knowledge of the community first of all I know an awful lot of people now that I didn't know before which is great for community and great for connection and I'll continue to do that as I said because that's really important to me I know a lot more about myself and what my role is, as I said, in the evolution of both my life and the community uh, around me. And I, I want to, as best I can, hang on to the optimism and the, and the, and the, the kindness and the sense of sort of connection and love that exists in all of us and is absolutely, in my opinion, required for us to create societies and, and our environment the way that we want them uh, to be. And um, that's not, not an easy task, but it seems like a good place to start from. Jeff, um, I want to thank you. I want to thank you from both Ian and myself for sitting down, taking time out of your busy schedule. But I want to pick up on something just a little bit here. And I just want to say thank you for opening up there. Um, as someone who has battled uh, addictions and uh, is on the sobriety path, it is, it is reassuring to hear that people who have been in public roles like you have are 
have deal with the same issues that everyday people deal with. So thank you so much for that. Um, and thank you for being part of the political trenches, local government at work. It's always great to have people on like yourself who are willing to chat about time in political office. Thanks, Jeff. It's, it's been an absolute pleasure. And uh, I'll go back to 2011. That That is one of the best decisions I've ever made in my entire life.